So looking at what we did yesterday, make sure you have your innovation portal stuff set up and you've added your collaborators if you are working with a partner and added me as a viewer. I saw a couple of those invitations, but I don't think I've seen them all. Um, so we ended this yesterday. We said in your notebook, you need a list of interesting ideas. Uh, you need a new portfolio with your invitation sent. And now I have an index card from every team. And you should start the five associations uh, assignment. So you're basically going to make one of the main things is working with the partner. Make sure not to duplicate associations. So just follow the instructions on the handout and you're good to go. So I gave you a little guy that looks like this. We're going to talk about A is for Acorn, right? So color this. This is element A. Stick it in your notebook. Before we get started into trying to justify the problem, I want to talk about developing a problem statement. We're going to go through some material on PLTW and then justification a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about that and you have some other handouts that we'll talk about as we go through this. So in your notes, join me if you would. And we're going to start with writing a problem statement. This is available to you in the PLTW curriculum. All right. So the reason we need to spend some time on the problem statement is two big overview uh, things that it can help us do. One, it's going to act as a guide that will help us get to the best solution. If you have a good problem statement, you know how to solve it. You know how you know the direction you need to follow to solve it. And then it's also going to help you communicate to stakeholders, your people that are interested in your solution and the people that are helping you develop your solution. It's going to help them understand exactly what you're trying to solve. All right. And then in the uh, curriculum, it talks about two kinds of problem statements. One is a research statement, and this takes a long time to do. It's where you're getting into the details about a problem. And then the other one is the um, business, business and industry problem statement. And this is where you can briefly propose a project to the stakeholders. Okay, so we're kind of gonna, we're gonna kind of do both. So when you're talking about a research statement, it has to answer the four W's and the H who and what and where and when and how okay so this is you have to be able to answer these questions when you develop your problem statement okay and we're going to look at an example in just a moment and then the other part is the business problem statement um, i like this word here where it talks about it's like an elevator speech okay this is going to be a concise description about what you're trying to do does that make sense Okay, we're good so far. All right. It, you're basically going to outline, this is my project, and this is why, why it's a project that's worth pursuing. All right. Then we're going to talk about, you have to have some supporting uh, content to support your problem. And we're going to talk about five journal critiques that get us there. That's one of the assignments coming up. But you have to have factual support for your problem statements. And that's not important. OK, this is a, a really good, it's got a comparison slide here. It talks about, a, it shows a bad problem statement and a good problem statement. So right here it says, lots of people go fishing for redfish and do not catch anything. There aren't as many redfish as there used to be. That's not a very good problem statement. But we can make it better by saying, who? Game fishermen fishing in the lower Laguna Madre of Texas reported between 2002 and 2007 a decrease of 20% in red drum, which is a specific kind of fish. Um, studies show that this loss can be attributed to premature death due to mouth infections caused when undersized fish are caught and released. So in this statement, we answer who, what, where, when, and how many. Okay. So when you get to your final problem statement, I'm not worried about your problem statement yet. But when you get to your problem statement, you have to be able to support all of that in your problem statement. And it should be about that long. Make sense? So this is the business aspect. And uh, so you have to have some evidence that shows who says it's a problem and how big is the problem. Okay. And then this is talking about, mm, that's not interesting to us. 
So again, you should be able to communicate to your audience what you are trying to achieve in about 20 seconds or less. That's what a good problem statement will do for you. Uh, it has no implied solution. You don't start out saying it's going to need uh, this kind of solution. It's just a problem. Okay, And that's one of the things that trips us up because we start coming up with how to solve it in our mind before we even get the problem defined. So don't spend your time at this point thinking about how to solve it. You want to really define the problem. And a couple of you have been kind of thinking along that line, so be careful about that. And then it also contains things that you can measure. This helps you do your evaluation when you're done and, or toward the end. And it should be it should lead us to developing something that we can test and make sure it works. So your problem statement leads us through the design and construction of our solution and it leads us to something that's testable to show that it works to solve the problem or not. Mm. We're going to talk more about scope in just a moment. And I like this little statement down here. It says it addresses the root problem, not the secondary effects. What you're trying to do is cure the disease, not treat the symptoms. That, I don't like that statement. That's really what you're after in these. Some pitfalls. Uh, having a problem that's too broad, it's too large, it's not well defined. If you do that, you end up with something that's going to be so, the, the project is too wide and you won't be able to finish it even in a year. Okay. It may, you may, if you, if it's broad, you may spend multiple years trying to solve that. Uh, so you need to kind of narrow it down to a specific solution for a specific problem. Okay. Uh, and then another thing is if you choose a problem that's beyond your control or influence, that's not going to work out so well. And if it's not stated objectively, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. And another thing that's going to happen is your problem statement may change the, I expect you guys to become experts on your topic. Okay. And as you become an expert, your problems, your problem statements will be refined and change a little bit and get more and more specific over time and also you'll be working with experts and there's some resources there so we're done with that one so far so good mm -hmm. okay so all right so this is from the teacher training and i like some of the slides in here so we're going to go through some of this so uh in your presentations that you develop you're going to explain uh why you're why justify your projects, or what well, we're going to talk about. This is an agenda, never mind. So we're going to talk about why we need to justify the kind of justification, the amount of justification, how to do article critiques and documentation, and then innovation portal element A, and then your attack plan diagram. That's where we're heading. So, all right, so whenever we define a problem, this is like we just talked about, uh, you have to have a problem that is really a problem that needs to be solved. Okay, so we have to have some support that says this is really a problem. It needs to highlight concerns of your stakeholders. It can't be just you. Okay. And lots of sources, lots of different arguments to support it, to justify your problem. Uh, I feel or I think that's not part of what you should be developing. Okay. Uh, some, an engineer took me to task one time. He says, you believe. There's no believe in engineering. It's either, it's all fact. You got to have facts. So... All right, there's no I in EDD yet. Okay, at this point, you're looking for you and whose army to support it. Later, you're going to be putting your own thoughts into stuff. But right now, you're looking for other people to agree with you. That's what we're after. All right, you should have this little, this, this little item here. So notice how it's blue at the top. I don't know about this. I would, I would have made this like green at the top and red at the bottom. But all right, so these are the types of sources you can use for justification. The best are books that are reference materials or general books. Uh, periodic, periodicals and academic journals are really, really good. Uh, the reason, is, especially academic journals that have been vetted where other people, they've been peer reviewed, other people have looked at it and said, yes, yes, this study is correct. We reproduced it, it's all good. So that's your library resources. Newspapers, you start venturing into editorial opinion, okay? And then multimedia, it's a little bit difficult to get a video and say, this is my source. So um, documented communication like electronic mail and interviews, 
Uh, it depend this documented communication, it depends on who it's from. If you have an industry expert, like you've got the CEO of some company helping you out, then that's very legitimate. But if you're just saying, if you're just emailing a guy that has a blog where he's just, you know, expressing his opinions, then that may or may not be useful. And then commercial internet sites, uh, they usually publish with the intent of selling something. So you've got to keep that in mind if you're looking at a vendor that you may not be getting the most objective things. So especially if they paid for the research. You see this in the uh, tobacco industry a lot where Philip Morris funds a lot of research to say this is not a problem. Same thing with Juul. Okay, they're publishing. We have all this research that says it's not a problem, but they funded it. So they're not going to fund it if it doesn't agree with what they want it to say. You see what I'm saying? So, all right. Uh, quality and quantity. We're going to stick to the number five. This is talking about different sources. I want five sources for every project from each of you. Okay. So if you are working with a partner, you're going to have 10 different sources. And we're going to talk about the angle of attack. We're going to re review Ed Spur in just a moment. We'll talk about that. So citing your research, we're going to use APA. That's what we're going to use because science uses APA. Uh, it's different than the, do you know the difference between APA and MLA? Yes. Okay. So MLA focused on who said it, APA when it was said. You're establishing chronology. All right. So uh, you know, you guys know how to get your sources. Okay, I'm going to talk more about journal critiques in just a moment. You should also have something that looks like this. Let's talk about what this means. As you are doing your research, you're trying to build an attack plan. Okay, you're trying to build some justification that you can support with health and safety concerns, with legal issues, with educational issues, with technical problems, with economics. Now, from what you know about your problem, what are some of your attack plans? Like right now, Chandler, which, which one do you have the most support for right now? In which path? Technical problems, okay. And what about, um, let's see, Calvin, you're, you're working with, okay. So which one do you, which path do you guys have? Probably technical, okay. Blake? Okay, health and safety, you're talking about the thermal stuff in the car, so. Um, and then Reese, what about you? Also technical, okay? So the thing is, if you only have one avenue of support, it's gonna be hard to justify the problem. So if you can attach it to more than one attack path, you're gonna have a stronger case for this is really a problem. And we may have to tweak and adjust. This is the first year I've done this class, so I don't know how to guide you very well. So it's okay if you start your research and you're like, we are not finding anything other than technical issues. We, you may need to change course a little bit. And I've got some advice for if you want to change course. All right. Uh, and then you have the little types of justification thing we already talked about. Do you have, these are all handouts at this point. Okay, cool. Let's go back to this and we'll talk about the rubric and I need to zoom out on that. So you should have this, put this in your notebook. What we're shooting for is a three minimum, this proficient. So let's zoom in straight up on that. So in element A, we want to be able to demonstrate general adequate understanding of key concepts it exhibits adequate evidence of attainment of skills. So what we're looking for is the problem is somewhat clearly and objectively identified. It's defined with adequate depth. It's elaborated with details. It has uh, information intended to, as elaboration may be imprecise or general. The justification of the problem highlights the concern of at least a few primary stakeholders and it's based on at least a few sources which are timely and credible. Although not all information included may be objective, the justification of the problem offers enough objective detail to allow at least a few measurable design requirements to be determined. Okay, that's what the uh, teacher that did our training suggested we shoot for at a minimum. Uh, I would also suggest go for go for the gold, go for the look at number five and shoot for this. That way you'll at least hit that. So 
I'll let you guys read that. Let's talk about Ed Spur. I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay. It's not actually a word. So this is the engineering design process portfolio scoring rubric. And I want to highlight some things that are going to help you along this process. I put some little symbols on each step. So as we go through this, again, we're not going to go through in the exact order. We're going to jump around a little bit um, as we go through developing your project. But when you see this little arrow, this is where design teams usually reflect on what they've done and look for opportunities to iterate okay so anywhere you see the little mouse arrow at that point that's a point where most people stop at that point and go should we do an iteration here on our design okay and then when you see the little stops the little red light green light yellow light this is where uh, their designers will normally stop and think about what they've learned and how they might improve their design so this is like a another reflective moment and then the parts where the little person is speaking these are points where you need to be able to articulate what can be done what's still missing what you still need to do in order to finish your project okay and your project doesn't necessarily have to be successful we talked about the tennis court uh, you need to be able to articulate what would what went wrong if that happens and what to do to fix it okay so this is intended as a kind of a guide for you to as we go through this process to say hey we're at this point we should be able to look for uh, iteration ideas all right let's talk about journal critiques which is the thing you're going to do after five associations and you have access to this through the canvas if you go to the home page to the notes but you're going to start from a blank document and you're going to add these headings you'll have the journal critique and then a number you're going to have your name and date you're going to have an apa reference you're going to have an article summary a critique and a pathway these are not the 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 document this document the journal critique is not ever going to be longer than one page okay got to keep it to a page you have to be concise so uh, we'll talk more about that. So you're going to copy and paste in the APA reference here. And then the article summary, it's not a copy of the ab abstract. Don't copy and paste this. This needs to be in your words. You're going to explain what you read. You're going to put your thoughts about what it's talking about. And you're going to include the meat that supports your problem. We're looking for this article is important and this is why. Okay. And you, it's going to be like two or three paragraphs. Uh, and I'll talk more when we go through the article in just a moment. I'll tell you how to write your summary. The critique explains why it is important to your project and what this is about and why you need it. Okay, so it's this is going to be like a little paragraph. And then the pathway, how does this guide the reader? How does it support your argument? How does it fit into your problem? And I want your, you to imagine yourself standing in front of a bunch of people and you're saying, here's an article that justifies my problem and this is why it's important this is what it says that's what that pathway should say does that make sense because so what we're doing is as we develop these you're getting content put together that all you have to do is cut and paste it to use it for your overall presentation and your final presentation so all right let's talk about articles a little bit uh need to click and drag click and drag click and drag i just want it to move can i drag it yeah okay good all right so when you get these articles i thought about this what we did this summer it's we printed everything we went through pounds of paper and i don't want to do that also it's really inconvenient to have all that paper and you really don't look at it again what i would like you to do is when you find an article that you want to use you're going to get your apa citation put that first and then you're going to copy and paste it into a word document does that sound good so far okay uh, you could also make it a PDF if you want, but I think it's going to be easier to work inside a Word document. Uh, then you use the highlighting, text highlighting. You're gonna, it's gonna be like makeup, right? You want a little bit of makeup, right? You don't want to make it look like a homework, right? You don't want to put all like color every paragraph from the top to the bottom. You just want the good stuff, right? So you're gonna highlight some things, key sentences, okay, key passages, stuff like that, and 
but I'm, you're going to give me the whole article, even if it's 100 pages long. Okay, but you're going to highlight the stuff that's important. Then when you've got that important stuff highlighted to write your summary, you're going to start with those highlighted sentences and you write your summary from what you highlighted. Does that make sense? So don't go crazy with the highlighter. Keep it focused on stuff that's important for your arguments. Okay, and I want five each. Okay, so what you're going to do, what you're going to turn in, you'll turn in five journal, criti journal critiques and five highlighted articles. Make sense? All right, let's look at what an, a journal article might look like. So I'm picturing something like this. For the journal critique, I'm going to suggest that you just follow whatever Word is trying to do. Uh, I would suggest using headings like heading two and three. Those are going to bring enough definition out. And then your where you're writing, you make it normal. Do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that? So if you go look at the... The home, let's see. So you're looking at headings and normal is these first couple of headings and the normal text. So, but it'll be kind of like this. So you'll have these headings and then you're going to, and I'm going to let you guys come up and do your own. So, uh, but we've already talked about what it's, what's going to be in there. So I'll put that assignment together and put it on Canvas. Any questions? No. Okay. So, um, put the put the stuff in your notebooks and work on your five associations, and we will continue from there. As far as a major grade for this, what we've done so far, I'm just going to take everything we've done and kind of average it all together, and that's going to be a major grade. So, I need your five associations turned in today so I can include that in the grading. All right, that's it.